lot of people question the reliability of these small private jets. Some people don't even want to travel on them, even if they have the money, because they say they're small. Uh, they prefer to fly British Airways and Lufthansa because, you know, they're bigger aircraft, pilots are better trained, you know. You get people like that. Uh, tell us a bit about the reliability of these private jets from an engineering perspective. I mean, are they really safe? Are they safer? I mean, what's the difference? From my personal experience, I would absolutely categorically say they are just as safe, just as reliable as the uh, more commercial uh, scheduled operations of the aircraft. The only area that I would say could be questionable, and I use that term very loosely, would be the, the maintenance organisation that's looking after the aircraft. A lot of them are very experienced. There's some great ones here in the UK who very, manage these aircraft very, very well. But obviously being a low utilised aircraft, uh, the area that sort of becomes more critical is when they're on the deck, how, how they looked after, how they maintained when they're not actually operating. Some operators park them up, cover them up, and let them go. Well, obviously, as far as the maintenance programs of a lot of these um, business jets, these um, aircraft, even though they're low utilization, still require routine maintenance. And if they're not going, if they're not in a form of long-term maintenance, which is a defined term, yeah. as far as the manufacturers are concerned, then they have to start entering what is termed as the storage program. And obviously, the longer they're in storage, the longer and the deeper storage processes have to be adopted. However, a decent organization will keep these aircraft out of that maintained storage program and in a well-maintained fit-to-fly process. Yeah, this is, a, this, is, this is an important point here because uh, a lot of people, they, they think that you know, the private jet makes you money when it's in the air and costs you money when it's on the ground. This is a thing they, that they talk about in the airlines. It, yeah. this, this business model is not applicable to the private jet. The private jet will make you money if it's available 24-7. And yeah. as we just pointed out, if you have your airplane sitting on the ground for, let's say, six, seven weeks and you're not using it, that's not good because an airplane will no. just be in the air, not on the ground. So it, it does need to do some flying. And if yeah. it's not doing as much flying as maybe you planned, then the engineer, the engineering support have to really be looking after the aircraft and making sure that all the parts are running. So that when yeah. you do launch into the air, things won't break down. Any other tips? For, for, yeah, for I mean, aircraft are clearly designed to fly. Uh, from a reliability perspective, all the systems, they like to be powered. It's like the, the Airbus, and the ACJ, it doesn't like to be switched off. Yeah. As long as it's left switched on and operating, in theory, you will never, and in practice, you will never really have too much of a problem with those aircraft. And a lot of the business jets are of the same ilk. They do have a very, with a lot of these um, softwares, a lot of the current sort of updated um, Garmin systems, for example, you switch them off, they're, they're an absolute pain to get going again and yeah, well, function 100%. And the technology, as you know yourself, in a lot of these private jets is more advanced than what you find in the airliners. I mean, I always tell people that the technology is first developed for the military, then it moves into private aviation, then it moves into the airlines. That's kind yeah. of how it works. Yeah. So the private jet pilots and the private jet engineers have, have got all this technology to deal with. And as Martin said, these machines don't like to be switched off. <laughs> <laughs> the engineering is, is important now on, on the but you know, they are very safe. And as I always say, you know, because a private jet is usually smaller, weighs less than the airliner. I mean, you take, for example, Airbus 380. The Airbus A380 can only land on certain airfields around That's the world. Right. If you have an emergency in flight and you have to divert to the nearest suitable airport, as it says in the checklist, with an Airbus A380, you're restricted. If you're flying around in a, in a Gulfstream G200 or a Lear 75, you've got many more options. And as Martin pointed out, these airplanes are perfectly safe. As long as they are maintained properly and flown properly, you are going to be in good hands. That's all from me on this episode. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please subscribe and share this video. And uh, that's all from Fab Polly at BizChat TV, and I'll see you in the next one.